So we're going to take a, a quick look at what we've done with regards to task management and how we can track tasks that have been assigned to other users, how we can uh, recover those tasks should a user um, leave the business or, or no longer be able to log in. Um, and that will account for not just users but also supervisors. Um, we've got two roles set up effectively here. One is a supervisor role, so they've got access to all the nice little functions that I'm going to show you. And one is a user role, and users specifically have the ability to do the predefined text, but they don't have the ability to take control of other tasks, etc. And this will become apparent as we play with this now. So let's take a quick look. Um, I've logged in as an administrator at the moment. Uh, this is the person that actually sees everything. Now, in real world, administrators won't log into the system. So any tasks that we see here, or as you guys would know them, alerts raised within the ETM system, um, they, the alerts raised get created as tasks within Yellowfin. Um, so those tasks are typically created by a, a sort of super user, somebody that's never actually ever going to log into the system. Now all of those tasks are immediately shared amongst all the users within uh, the user group for that client organization. Um, and they are labeled as ETM users effectively. So within the, um, the actual task management system, uh, we'll see these flag up as ETM users uh, in the middle of our screen here. That's how that works. Now, the supervisors uh, can see all of those tasks. All users can see all of those tasks because they are part of the ETM user group. So everybody can see them. But as soon as uh, a supervisor assigns that task uh, or a user takes that task, only those people that they've been assigned to or, or have taken the task can actually see the task. So we needed a way to be able to recover those and get those back in under control should they need to be that way. Uh, and I'll show you how that's done today. But the first thing we're going to do is very quickly trigger a new uh, alert that's raised. So we'll see what happens with that. And I can do that using the same code that we've got embedded in the back end of the ETM system. Uh, but I've got a little cheat here that allows me to do it on screen straight away. So I'll do just that. So I've just triggered it and we'll have a new alert show up within our task manager. Um, you'll notice that we've got uh, some buttons across the top of the screen. Uh, these are unique to ETM. So one of them is task manager, takes us directly into our task manager. Um, and uh, these can be used to, to jump around the system. So we can jump straight to task manager, alerts, dashboard, investigations, what if, etc. All of those things pop up straight away. So I've just triggered that new task and we can see it down the bottom here. This is the MTC 335 investigation required test. Um, it's flagged as to do. It says it's assigned because it is assigned. It's assigned to the user group ETM users, as we can see here. Um, at the moment, I'm logged in as administrator. So me and me are flagged up as the two things because it was the administrator role I used to create this thing. Okay, so um, what I can do with that now as a supervisor is I could reassign it to somebody else if I wanted to. But if I quickly log in as another user, um, we'll also see that that uh, actual task is also available to that other user uh, because they're part of the same group. So same thing, log in, task management, um, I look at all times and there we are, we can see the same thing, MTC 335, uh, investigation required, ETM users, it's all created straight away. But notice at the end here we've got requester system administrator. Now in the world of ETM that'll actually say that super user, that account that was used to create the task in the first place. What this actually allows us to do now is take a look at all of those tasks so we don't lose tasks anymore. So I can click on this and actually jump straight to those system administrator tasks and I can see all of the tasks that have been uh, defined, created by the system, etc. They're all in there. Uh, they're all available for everybody to see. 
um, across all time, etc. The only difference is that I can't do anything with these. They're not my tasks. They are the system's tasks. I could do them if I could do something with them if they were assigned to me, um, or I could reassign them to somebody else, etc. But as just a plain user, I can't do anything with them other than just take a look at them. So, for example, I can just take a look and see what's happened with that particular task, for example. Um, I could take a look at another one that's complete, uh, that's actually been resolved, etc. But I can at least see what's going on with those things, that's not a problem. So basically what we're saying is any of these items here that are highlighted as, as light blue, I can use, I can jump to and take a look at what's going on with those tasks, etc. that are assigned to those people. Okay, and I can always jump back to task administ uh, task manager button and see my requests, stuff that has appeared uh, that I can get on with or I can do. So let me take a look at that. So we've got this latest one, MTC335, the investigation required test. It's not. It's been assigned to the group, but no one's actually picked it up. We don't have a user actually doing anything with this. We can tell because there's no links here for this particular thing. It's just flagged as uh, an ETM user. So either I can pick this up, I can take control of this and I can do something with it, I can assign it to myself, um, or a supervisor could do this, or I could just start to actually put in anything in here as I start an investigation, or I could say with pause this investigation, or whatever I want to say, I can put in here. I can also actually pick up some predefined text. Now what this predefined text uh, allows us to do is things like make it very specific what we actually want to do here. So for example, um, I could say I want to transfer this to a gas desk and actually transfer it, send it over to them. But it, it's now noted in the system as predefined text that is transferred to gas desk. What that allows us to do is actually start to report on exactly how many tasks have this flag, have been transferred to uh, gas desk. How many have gone to power? How many have gone to oil? How many have been closed? How many uh, have sat being investigated for too long? All of those things we can now do because we've got that predefined text. Um, with a, a standard open text field, you can go mad here and you can put anything in. By having predefined, we can limit what goes in there. Of course, the user can still put what they like, but we can grab this uh, from an actual uh, from the actual database and report on it. That's super, super important. Um, so I've effectively taken hold of that and I've started to do something with this particular task. But let me log back in again as the supervisor uh, and we'll take a look at what else we can do with this. <clears throat> so again, jumped in. Uh, I've got my dashboards, etc., but I can click on task management um, and I can take a look. Um, I can see that uh, this is still available, it's still uh, outstanding, it's not actually officially assigned to anybody. Um, I'm going to assign it now. So I'm going to assign this. I can see that somebody's put some stuff in already. I can see who, user 2, has done it. Um, uh, I can see that they, they put this in at this particular time and they transferred it to a desk, gas desk. Clearly user 2 is doing something with this, so I'm going to assign it to them um, and leave that where it is. So as soon as I do that, notice I don't see this task anymore. It's gone to user 2. They are working on it. Doesn't mean I can't get hold of that task. Of course I can. I can always get hold of these tasks. I can either use links on screen that will take me to user 2 to go and find that particular task um, exactly like uh, I am doing here um, and I will be able to see that task, there it is, uh, in progress by user 2 or I could use the people link uh, effectively within my menu system and jump straight to user 2's uh, task management screen and see what they're doing with that particular, um, that particular task. So again, I can click on it and I can see what's been going on with it. I could put some extra entries in here if I wanted to and give them some advice, um, take a look at things, whatever is going on. Of course, there is the option to add screenshots, videos, files, links, etc. into this task. So I'll be able to review those as well if I wanted to. But notice there's another item that's appeared on this menu now that wasn't there for user 2. And that is take ownership. 
What this actually allows me to do um, is as a supervisor, and let's say user two is no longer with the business for whatever reason, their tasks are still assigned to them. Um, typically, another user wouldn't be able to reassign them to them because they're not, not theirs. But as a supervisor, I can take ownership of that task. So I click on take ownership. I can see that it is this exact task, uh, MTC 325 investigation required test, user two in progress, administrator, um, etc. And I can accept that and take ownership of it. So effectively what's happened there is that that task um, is now my task is come back to me. It's come back to me as a supervisor. Um, I can do something with that task now. So I could reassign it to somebody else. Um, I could uh, do, carry on the investigation myself. Um, I could delete it. I could close it. I could do whatever needs to be done with that particular task. Or I can reassign it to somebody else, as I've already said. So there's always something that can be done. Uh, with that particular task um, and we can get around any issues that, that might actually uh, have actually popped up with that task. So effectively now what we've got is the ability to always find the tasks uh, whether they've gone to somebody else or, or whether they've just been created within the system. Now some other things within here uh, which are really useful to us um, obviously we can see status please note that so we've got complete assigned in progress etc um, we can sort by these things, so I'm going to quickly log out and log back in as um, a supervisor, um, and, I, and I can have a little play with that. Again, jump straight to task management. Uh, I can see all my tasks, etc. I can see what's going on, uh, what's being requested, etc. within the system. Um, so I could, for example, say I want to see everything that is just complete. So again, I can just do status, get complete. This happened to have been complete by user two. I can jump to user two and actually take a look at that particular task, uh, pop it open and see what was said, who said it, when, etc. blah, blah, blah. I can, I can get through that task. So again, I've got control of all of those things. And of course, I can also use my people menu uh, to jump around and take a look at those things. Now, something else that we've started to build within this system is not just this. So the task management now works as we expected it to with all the abilities to move, track, take ownership, uh, apply, predefined text, etc. It works the same with regards to actually closing tasks as well. So, for example, if I take a look at, uh, let me just grab this particular task. It's just some junk there, but it is just a task. I can effectively mark this task as resolved. Um, and again, we've got the ability to pick how we actually resolve that task. All right, so we can, uh, same thing again, we can apply that resolution to the task, uh, it becomes resolved uh, or closed or whatever, whatever we want to call this. Uh, but again, we can report on it based on the actual resolution. So that window that popped up a moment ago saying what resolution type, we've got some ideas on what to do with that screen. Um, and effectively what we're saying here is that resolving a task should not be in uh, a, just a simple click of a button thing. You need to understand, or the users need to understand, that in resolving a task, they have completed the investigation they are happy with the outcome with it. They know what needs to be done, etc., etc. Um, so we're going to put that kind of information on screen. And as you can see, that now says complete. What we're actually going to do is pop up on that screen that, look, you've done the work. That's fine. Um, you need to understand that in deciding to resolve that, and same again, we've got the same control within this screen. We can pop this open and, and put the, the pre-resolution text in there. But in resolving that particular task, what we're saying is um, you're happy with all the investigation. You're not just going to resolve this, uh, click a button and move away. You've got to understand that the uh, work has been done. It's almost like signing it off as complete and your name goes next to it. Again, we can report on that within the system um, all of those items that have been resolved, when, who, by, what the resolution was, when it was closed, 
uh, any calls to action, etc., etc., all reported um, within the uh, the MIS dashboard that we're building at the moment. Okay, so that's uh, that's a quick run round um, on the system uh, and how we are looking after those tasks. Um, by all means, any questions, just fire me an email. Uh, happy to take anything like that. I've got some screenshots that go with this video as well, uh, which I'll circulate. Um, and hopefully uh, that's kind of all makes sense. We do need to apply it to the UAT system so that it can be tested and looked at and viewed and everyone can play around with it. Uh, but suffice to say, the actual mechanics of it are all done now um, and it works very well indeed. All right, guys, so I hope this really helps. As I say, any problems, give me a call or email me. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, and I'll come straight back to you. Thanks a lot.